Thyroid cancer is a common endocrine cancer, but relatively rare in terms of overall cancers. Um, it's got a unique feature in being very prevalent if you go looking for it. So at post-mortem or in other studies, you can actually find many individuals have got small pockets of thyroid cancer that they never knew they had in life. It's a rare, it's a rare cancer. I mean, the, the usual cancer is breast cancer, prostate cancer with men. They're the two common cancers, but there's not much about poor old thyroid cancer. It tends to be put on a back burner because it's not, it's not very, not many people suffer from it. But in, in our lives, it would present as a thyroid nodule. Increasingly, would be noticed by a relative or a friend or a new GP. Or commonly now, we often get them diagnosed because people have had a scan for something else and it's turned up as what's called an incidental finding. And that's called a thyroid incidental oma. Yeah, I, I noticed I had this lump. I was back at uni and I was just laying on my bed and I thought, hmm, what's that? And it, I mean, it was the size of an egg at the time. It was huge, but I just hadn't noticed it. Um, I'd been putting weight on and things as well, so I assume, you know, it's just fat on my neck or something like that. But I, I rung my mum and I just said, do you think this is normal? Um, Although thyroid cancer is common in women, what I'm saying is that the high-risk group is, is, is elderly men, particularly. Um, so the, I, I mean, it has to be said that thyroid cancer in general is thought to be a very treatable and curable form of cancer. So again, even if you're in the unlucky 5% or the 1 in 20, 9 out of 10 of those patients are expecting a very good outcome. I was never in any danger, I don't think, of my cancer killing me, but even still, it shows you what a different world it is. It tends to be quite a relaxed rather than, although the patient may be very concerned, from the doctor's perspective, it's a relatively common problem that we're dealing with. And there's a process that we go through to try and um, evaluate the likelihood or the risk of malignancy in each particular person's case. So I went to the doctor and they agreed to see me straight away, which I didn't expect. Um, there was just the doctors on campus, but it was quite late in the evening. Um, and I just went and said, can somebody have a look at this? Um, a test has been created called the fine needle aspiration to obtain cytology, usually guided by an ultrasound scan, but not always, where a small needle is placed into the middle of the nodule and that cells are obtained from that sample, which we look at under the microscope. And according to those findings, you can classify people as being benign or malignant, or sometimes in the middle where it's not completely secure in terms of what the final diagnosis would be. My tumour was a bit of a bugger, really, because I had a biopsy um, and an ultrasound. And the biopsy, there was one of five results it could have got. Um, and basically, mine got not ranked a three, which was inconclusive. So they had to go in and take half of my thyroid and uh, um, lump on it out and then test that to see what it was. You can say to someone, well, look, the cytology hasn't been reassuring enough to give us a final answer. So often in that middle group, people need a small operation to get a final old fashioned, if you like, histological diagnosis. They recommended to me that it was better that I had the other half out. So um, that was booked in for the, I think it was the 2nd of August, so that was a Friday as well. Um, the, there was always the possibility of having the radio ID and they, they'd sort of mentioned it to me, um, you know, this is the normal process that people go through. At that stage, again, we make a decision within this multidisciplinary team that's supervising this process as to whether or not radio iodine, which would be an additional treatment um, to prevent evidence of recurrence or to treat existing disease, should be offered. I had um, radioactive iodine on January 31st, and since then it's just oncology appointments, um, and I got the all clear, it must have been September 15th. One of the big advantages we have in thyroid cancer is that even though it's a cancer, it still behaves biologically like normal thyroid cells. And so the production of thyroid globulin, the ability of the cells to take up iodine, we can utilize as part of the treatment and its monitoring from then on. And then patients are put on long-term thyroid hormone replacement because obviously they don't have a thyroid gland anymore. And we can adjust the dose of thyroid hormone that they need to appropriately and individually make sure their target is appropriate for the long term. Because you want the thyroxine to work 
and suppress the thyroid stimulating hormone you have to keep your weight steady because I, I don't have a thyroid now so if I put on too much weight then more thyroxine is needed and your sort of thyroxine levels go up and down up and down and you want to try and keep them steady um, basically just because I don't have a thyroid anymore so it just produces the same thing um, so it just does it artificially but I'll have to take that for the rest of my life but it's it's not really a big medication it's more just you know it's just substituting for something I would have if I didn't have cancer so. it all sounds therefore a very simple process and um, but actually in reality it can be quite tricky um, so the dose that we need, should, once, you, once you've, so for example, in someone who's had a thyroid, thyroid removed by surgery, in theory, once you've got their dose right, it should be the same for the rest of their life. So I had two major operations uh, and three radioiodine treatments before I was free of it. But I'm, I'm actually not free of it because it, spread, it had spread to my lungs. Um, but as long as I keep taking thyroxine tablets, it, it, the lung spots don't grow. But the thyroid cancer itself shouldn't actually change the function of the gland until your surgeon has taken it out or you've had, or, and you've had radioiodine as well, in which case you're on long-term thyroxine. But that should be managed in a way to keep you quite stable as well. So you shouldn't be looking at somebody having long-term problems with stability if they're taking their tablets regularly. It's just getting in a routine with that really because um, I just I started taking them with breakfast. That's the best way to remember them. But I still forget them here and there. And also I forget to say when I need a new prescription. The vast majority of per patients, if they've had successful surgery with or without radioiodine, they're on their long-term thyroid hormone replacement. You are expecting them to have a completely secure and long-term health outcomes that, that's the same as even as if the thyroid cancer hadn't happened. It showed me what I'm capable of. It showed me I'm really strong when I need to be. It showed me that um, I can keep going, I, can, I don't give up, it, that I'm determined. And it just sort of made me see all these qualities to myself that I perhaps didn't think I had.